November 5th, 2003, all doubt of Ridgway's guilt was erased. He pleaded guilty to the murders of 48 women. He'd made a deal to cooperate with the prosecution to provide more information on his victims and the whereabouts of their remains. In doing so, he avoided a trial and possible death penalty. Mr. Ridgway, how do you plead to the charge of aggravated murder in the first degree as charged in count one for the death of Wendy Lee Caulfield? Guilty. How do you plead to the charge of aggravated murder in the first degree as charged in count two? Guilty. 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 It's like he didn't have any remorse at all for what he had done. You know, he'd killed so many people, he didn't remember who they were, what they looked like. I just couldn't believe that somebody could kill all those people and not remember them. Neither could the angry relatives of his victims, who were invited to speak in court when Ridgway was sentenced to life without parole on December 18, 2003. You had said your memory, when it comes to all of the women you took, was gone. Our memory is not. In your words, you said that they didn't mean anything to you, but she meant everything to us. She was a mother, she was a wife, she was a sister, and we miss her. Gary Ridgway sat there stone-faced as victims' relatives damned him and mocked him. He's an animal. I wish for him to have a long, suffering, cruel death. He's gonna go to hell and that's where he belongs. But then the emotionless facade finally cracked when the father of one of his victims morning, appeared to surprise him with a dose of human kindness. Mr. Ridgway, um, there are people here that hate you. I'm not one of them. You've, you've made it difficult to live up to what I believe, and it is what God says to do, and that's to forgive. You are forgiven, sir. that you play with, bro. You get by to yourself, you get on your knees and you pray. Because the journey you got ahead of you, you going to need God. I forgive you. ain't got no anger towards you, bro. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his child. I sacrificed mine. I was you. I once was you. And in these same courtrooms, I was a monster. I'm pretty sure they don't told you about me. I know why you don't want to see, bro. You took something from me you can't give back. I don't want no revenge. I gave it to my God. The same God that you played with, I gave it to him. And he took that pressure from me. That I couldn't deal with myself. A lot of people would have suffered if I would have dealt with it. But the fact that it took six years, man, for you to be a man and admit to what you've done wrong. All these people you hurt, man. Huh. Phone calls through three o'clock in the morning, man. And I gotta get up my bed and go console her. Go get her from the grave site four day in the morning when she there crying about my baby. Huh. That's the woman you gotta have forgive. Let me tell you one thing about her, bro. It's hard for her to forgive. I've been dealing with it for the last 17 years. And I'm still asking her for forgiveness. But 
I forgive you, bro. That's how strong my God is. I come in smile at you today with no harm or ill will towards you. You my brother. You made a mistake. But you got time. You got time to get right with God, bro. Like I said, I once was you. I was a monster. I was just like you. So if my God can change me to make me a better man, I do that. I celebrate the day. September 13, 2017. I've been out three years. They told me I'd never stay out three years and make it on these streets. Not only have I been out three years, started my own business. For to start another business. For to go to school to be a law clerk. So if it took me to sacrifice and lose my child, because the last thing my baby said to me when I talked to her, she said, Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. And I sat and I wondered, what kind of father am I if my child says she's going to pray for me? I should be praying for her. I should have been here to protect her. But I wasn't. That's what I deal with. And I'm pretty sure you know my baby called out for me. I wasn't there for my baby. I'm going to make sure I'm there for my others. Like I say, bro, don't play with God, bro. Ask him for forgiveness. You did wrong. Your mistakes just worse than others. When you get by to yourself, you get on your knees and you pray harder than you ever prayed in your life. And you ask for his forgiveness. Because I give you mine. I ain't got no real way to talk to you, bro. I love you. You're a child of God. But don't play with him. Because if you play with him, he's going to destroy you. You take that Bible that them people give you, and you pray. And you ask him to make you a better man. Don't look at this as your life being over. At 15 years old, 12, 24, 2024, I'm still supposed to be in prison. He freed me, he released me. He brought me home. He can do the same for you. Like I said, I'm not like everybody else. I've been where you've been at. Still supposed to be where you be at. But he set me free. That's what he'll do for you. He may not release you physically. Spiritually he will. But you pray to God, bro. You tell him that you made a mistake and you ask for his forgiveness. That's how I am. I asked him. He forgave me. And I gotta go to the people that I hurt and I gotta ask them for their forgiveness. That made me a better man. See, people all, all day long about they Christians. How can you be a Christian if you're not able to forgive a person that did wrong to you? You my brother. I don't care what nobody else say I love you. You made a mistake. I forgive you, bro. I ain't got no ill wills towards you. But you go back and you ask God to make you a better man, because I asked him, and he made me a better man. So I asked that you do the same. I ain't perfect, I make mistakes. But he changed me from what I used to be. Like I said, I once was you, I was a monster. But he took that away from me. He helping me to be a better father, he helping me to be a better man. You got all these people, bro, that you got to ask for forgiveness from, especially her. And she's a whole woman for forgiveness. But before you leave this earth, bro, ask for forgiveness. Ask her for that. The whole six years, ain't none of your attorneys, ain't none of your people reached out and ask nobody for forgiveness. I'm coming to you. I'm giving you my forgiveness, bro. I love you. But you need to ask that woman that for forgiveness. It may take some time. She's stubborn. But you got to ask her. 
It's right here, bro. I keep my baby right here. But do me that favor. That same vibe you got with you, bro. You sit down, you have a good conversation with God, man. And you talk to him. You ask him for his forgiveness. And I guarantee you'll feel the calm, calm you will never felt in your day in your life. That what I feel, and I still feel it. I'm at peace, bro. You need peace in your soul. So you going, you asking that tonight. You ask for his forgiveness, and I guarantee he'll give you a peace. Your earthly body is done away. But you got to build up when you go see them. You know what I'm saying? You got a mom. Your mom ain't raised you like that, bro. Just like my mom ain't raised me the way I was raised. So be a man. That's all I ask you before you leave today, man. Be a man and stand on your own two feet, man. I ask her for forgiveness. That's all I ever ask for you, bro. That's all I want for you, my you. Good brethren. You ask her for forgiveness. And we good. I made my peace. My peace with you, my brother. But you asked this woman right here for, for her forgiveness. We good. Thank you.